It's no secret that I suffer with pretty bad chronic anxiety. I've spoken about it many times. I, as in I mention it, but I haven't really done like a, a dedicated sit down video to it and address certain things. And honestly, my heart goes out to anyone else that's watching this that can relate and that does suffer with chronic anxiety. I know that it can be not just crippling, but like life consuming, soul consuming. Um, there are definitely times where I literally feel like I'm being strangled and I can't breathe and um, anyone else out there that suffers with intense fear and anxiety, I get it, I'm with you. I was going to film a completely different video today. I know I say that every single time, but it does happen every single time. And then I decided, you know what, I want to just sit down and just have a heart to heart, a chill conversation and kind of talk about the things that I'm currently working on. Um, where I'm at right now in my journey of trying to kind of heal from chronic anxiety and certain things which are really really working for me after pretty much my whole life of suffering from it you know like 30 years of just fear and shaking and high adrenaline and, and all that kind of stuff finally there are a few things weird things actually that are working for me um, and if any of those things that I mentioned can help even two people that watch this video then mission accomplished for me. I am someone that has tried absolutely everything when it comes to anxiety. I'm talking obviously medication, supplements, uh, lifestyle things, dietary things, um, meditation, which I'm not really big on, but I have tried it in the past. Um, but there are a couple of things which I think are really worthy of noting because in the last few months, they're things that I've been implementing consistently um, and they, I can't say that I'm anxiety free at all. I mean, will I ever be? I don't know. I pray one day that I will be. You all know that I'm also a recovering addict. And by recovering addict, I mean, it's a daily battle. It's not just like, oh, I used to take a bunch of drugs and now I don't. It's, it's not as simple as that. It's the mindset about it. It's the constant, every time the anxiety hits, the urge to use also hits. Every time I'm feeling pain or heartbreak, my, my initial reaction still is to reach for something to numb it. Um, and I think the biggest test for me over the last year, especially, is uh, to not engage in that, which to be honest, I've been doing very, very well with. Sitting through the pain sometimes and learning that actually I can push through, there are certain things that work, even if they're just things that help momentarily, um, that can possibly help you through a blip where you might actually do something dangerous to yourself. So I made a video recently, by recently I mean about two months ago, I think. I have no concept of time. That doesn't just mean hours in the day, it means actual like days, months, years, I just, no concept. Um, it's like right now I've just turned the camera on. Has it been 10 minutes? Has it been an hour and a half? I have no idea. One thing that has massively, massively, massively helped me and I mentioned this in a recent vlog, I think it was my week in a life vlog. I don't know, it was maybe a bit different to my other content. It was just very, very chilled um, and I showed a lot of just real moments of my week rather than just the fun moments or the food moments or the challenge moments. Honestly, more than any drug, prescribed medication, supplement, lifestyle thing, spending time with friends, like all the things which are, you know, good for the soul, good for the heart, good for the mind, all that kind of stuff. Something that has helped me more than all of those put together is just as simple as laying on a prana mat. Um, this video is not sponsored by Pranamat. Um, they don't even know who I am, I'm assuming. But like I showed in that vlog, um, one thing I'm doing every day now is trying to lay on the mat for about 45 minutes. I don't know, if someone would have told me, after all the things that I've tried, that laying on a fucking mat would help me so much to the point where I feel like a different person mentally and physically when I stand up from laying on that mat, I would have been like, Nah, you're, you're taking the piss out of my life again. It's so funny because I'm so stubborn and, it, and, I, and I always like to think that I can just conquer things on my own. So I don't know, I, I feel like when people suggest things to me because I'm so stubborn, it's almost like I don't want to hear their suggestion. I have to wait until it feels right for me. Um, Jill has been like recommending and suggesting that I lay on this Prana mat, which is actually hers, it's not mine. Literally since we've been together, so almost a year and a half. But I was so resistant to it because I was thinking, you know, if this can't help me, if that can't help me, blah, 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 blah. All the things that are supposed to work for anxiety, if they can't help me, how can laying on a fucking spiky mat help me with my anxiety in life? That cripples me almost on a daily basis. But yeah, laying on this mat has just done absolute wonders for me. It does hurt at first, all right? Um, and again, I'm going to leave the link to Pranamat down below. Again, 
not sponsored, don't have an affiliate link. When I find something that works, I'm gonna promote it. Uh, but laying on this mat for 45 minutes, putting on some slow, sensual music, sometimes even some sexual music, you know, just to kind of really feel the vibe. Just something slow, smooth, something that really relaxes my mind. And then you get the spikes from the mat, which really penetrate you. Not like that. When you do first lie on it, it does hurt, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't hurt, but it's like a very uncomfortable, as if you have a thousand acupuncture needles in your neck and in your back. Lick my pussy and my crack. But it works. Sometimes it can take 10, 15, 20 minutes to really sink into it. Uh, but once you do, you don't even feel the pain of the mat anymore. And you kind of almost sink into this blissful, euphoric state. Uh, which honestly I don't ever want to come out of like it's just so smooth and blissful and beautiful I stand up and I'm kind of just like whew, I kind of feel like I'm high even though I'm not high um, well, As in not now anyway, and everyone else I know that also has one um, Has also described the same thing that you kind of sink into this blissful calm Euphoric mode so get yourself a prana mat lay on it Thank me later. Another thing that really, really has helped me in the past um, and also in the current is something that I'm starting to, to do again is to supplement with high dose magnesium. If you're someone that has no reason why you shouldn't take magnesium, as in there are, I believe there are certain rare medications that you can't take it with. Again, only you will know that. But if you're a regular person of good health, I would absolutely recommend, and, and you're suffering from anxiety, um, or nervous twitches, all that kind of stuff, would definitely recommend good magnesium. By good magnesium, I mean magnesium glyconate um, is a pretty good one. Magnesium citrate, I would not recommend at all because it basically just goes straight through you. Uh, but glyconate is pretty good and I think a dose of about 600 milligrams a day is pretty good, split in split doses, so like 200, 200, 200. The reason magnesium works so well is because it is basically nature's tranquilizer. Um, it's one of the building blocks of serotonin in the brain. A lot of us don't get enough magnesium and a lot of us are drained of magnesium because stress drains it from our bodies. When we are under more stress, whether that be mental or physical, um, magnesium can really, really help to just kind of soothe your nervous system, calm your nerves. Um, again, that's why it's known as nature's tranquilizer. It really, really does work. Of course, it doesn't work as well as like strong sedatives. Obviously, that's not the effect we're after, right? I mean, I was at some point in my life where I wanted to take something to not feel at all. Now I do want to feel, I want to, I want to live and breathe everything that's coming my way. Uh, but I want to do it with a nervous system that's not constantly twitching and cramping and um, driving me insane basically. And magnesium really, really does work to just calm your nervous system in a very, very healthy and natural way. Again, a lot of us do not get enough of it. From food, it's very rich in dark leafy greens because it comes together with chlorophyll. But out of all the supplements, including the other ones like L-theanine, um, melatonin, um, magnesium works the best across the board. Whether that's like physical, you know, like semantic anxiety, or it's just mentally driven stress, magnesium pretty much always helps with that. So definitely something to consider. Another thing that really, really works for me um, in terms of like, just put it this way, the way you start your day is often the way that you finish, right? If you start on a positive note, um, if you do something that's good for your nervous system first thing in the morning, it's often the way that you kind of it's often the way that the day pans out and how you feel throughout the rest of it because if you start the day as an anxious wreck and you dive into work like that, I mean, for me, it's just a recipe for disaster. One thing that really helps for me is waking up very early. Uh, that's not because I want necessarily to wake up very early, but th there is something very, very, this might sound a bit weird, but I'm sure that some of you other guys can relate to this. There's something very haunting, but also enchanting about being awake very, very early in the morning. Um, recently, I've been setting my alarm for about 4.30 or 5, obviously trying to go to bed early as well. Um, and then in those early hours of the morning, before I do anything, before I go to the gym, before I eat breakfast, before I start work, I kind of just take some time for myself, but it's always very early in the morning. I'm talking like 5 a.m. Whether that's watching something that calms me, whether it's listening to calming music, whether it's sitting there, looking out into the garden and just breathing for an hour or if it's going for a long walk in the dark I mean in the summer it wouldn't be in the dark but right now obviously in the dark trust me there there's just something about being up early being with yourself in those hours almost in kind of an, an intimate way waking up late for me just doesn't work because it just ends up in a panic um, 
Don't get me wrong, there are certain days if I'm really tired where I won't set an alarm at all and I'll just sleep till 9 or 10 if my body needs it. But generally speaking, and I know it can be hard for a lot of people if you're not used to this, but trust me, set your alarm for 4.30 or 5, whether it's dark, whether it's light, sit there and breathe, go for a walk in nature, get some fresh air. It is one of the most incredible things for your nervous system in terms of calming it. And also just that tranquil quietness of that time of the morning and the fact that there's no other humans around it really helps you to just connect with yourself because there really isn't that much distraction. It's just you, you're just there with yourself, which can be very scary, um, I'm not gonna lie, like a lot of the time just to be with myself, but those early hours in the morning, it's kind of blissful. I feel like one thing that's kind of goes under the radar when it comes to anxiety, people always think of methods or practices or uh, medication even, but where was I going with that? But yeah, one of the things that shouldn't be overlooked is in nutrition. And by nutrition, I'm not going to sit here and lecture you about how you should or shouldn't eat. Like, I never do that. Um, obviously, I promote a whole foods, plant-based diet, and I'm vegan myself. But one thing that's really important above that um, is eating regularly. And this is something that I have to admit I fail to do a lot of the time. You all know, I've said before, that I, I have accidentally kind of intermittent fasted for about the last seven or eight years and I'm kind of now just trying to break that it just became a habit for me that you know I'm not hungry when I wake up and I'll just eat when I'm hungry and then often eat up eat up often end up eating my last meal very late in the day when you go long periods of time without eating and your blood sugar dips um, the automatic response of your body is that your adrenal glands kick in they start pumping up cortisol and adrenaline in, into your body to almost give you like fake or artificial energy um, and to pull out glycogen storage from your cells to use as energy. But that whole process can be very anxiety inducing. I've mistaken anxiety with hunger so many times in the past, or right, not hunger, low blood sugar. Um, because the sensation is extremely similar, right? You mentally feel a bit just not with it, physically very jittery and shaky and on edge, very unsettled. Um, but again, this can often be due to low blood sugar levels. Um, and your body not having a steady supply of energy to fuel you and to keep your serotonin levels boosted, you know, for a long period of time. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of what to eat and what not to eat, but I'm just gonna say, make sure you eat regularly, make sure you're including complex carbohydrates with those meals, not only because they release their energy slowly, but because complex carbohydrates are the foods that raise the serotonin levels in your brain. And so if you're not doing that, if you're not, you know, supplying your body with the adequate things that it needs to build serotonin, um, how do you expect to be calm? You know, how do you expect your body to be in a state of kind of homeostasis if your blood sugar levels are so low and then your cortisol, your adrenaline, your whole kind of backup survival system is kicking in? Obviously, that's going to induce a very anxiety feeling experience. I know a lot of people are just out the house all day and have to do things on the run. But even if you do that, you can still prepare, have in your bag, you know, like fruit and nuts. Again, I'm not saying that this is a cure for anxiety. But that feeling of being anxious and that feeling of, oh my God, I need to do something to relieve this can often be due to low blood sugar levels. So make sure you're eating whole foods, which, you know, supply you with the goodness that your brain needs to build that serotonin, all the B vitamins, the magnesium, all that kind of stuff, but also eat regularly. Very simple and obvious point, but one that needs to be mentioned because so many people just fail to to put it into practice um, on a daily basis, including me. Kind of making this video for me too, you know, to watch it back and, and remind myself and be inspired by myself. That sounds very big headed, but you know what I mean. One thing which I have had a lot of resistance to, and I think it's because my girlfriend kind of specializes in breath work, um, and I know that it's such a powerful tool for anxiety, but because I'm one stubborn motherfucker and I don't listen to the closest people around me, apparently, it's been like this my whole life. Like my dad is an ortho was an orthopedic surgeon, um, and when I was in sport and every time I had an injury, it was kind of like I would not listen to anything that he told me just because he was my dad and I didn't see him as the amazing surgeon and doctor that he was for my injuries. I just saw him as my dad. Like, you're my dad. Just be my dad and shut up. Maybe I feel that way towards Jill sometimes. You know, you're my life partner. You're not my healer. So when you suggest something to me, it's like, nope. Let me let, let me figure it out for myself, which is obviously so stupid, immature. I haven't engaged in proper breath work yet, but one thing I can say is, for fuck's sake, guys, just breathe. Just breathe, because when I'm in moments of anxiety, I don't even realise it. 
until someone around me picks up on it because it's very obvious and they're like, Miles, you're not breathing. Like, you're actually not breathing. And I'm like, well, obviously I'm breathing because I'm alive. But the thing is, my breath, when I get anxious, is very, very shallow. Um, and I think actually sometimes my anxiety is, is induced because of my shallow breathing. I can kind of be like, you know, that kind of thing. Even if you don't know the ins and outs of the certain practices of actual breath work, you don't even really need to because one thing that I've started doing is just sitting still and just taking a lot of deep breaths, like a big straight into the stomach and then, and you know, just doing that even for just five or 10 minutes and just really just getting in a lot of oxygen into my body and also just being in that state of rhythm, of calmness, um, focusing on your breath as well. When was the last time that you sat down lay down and just allowed yourself to just i mean if you can go for longer that's great but even if it is just five or ten minutes that's not what she said but even if it is for just five or ten minutes at the end of a tough long work day just lay on your bed turn the lights off put a candle on breathe 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 like the things i was worried about leading up to the breathing it kind of i don't know when i come out of it it almost similar to the mat i'm almost like why was i panicking about that why was I afraid of that? Why was my body like literally shaking with fear over something that really doesn't need to be not just overthought, but doesn't even need to be thought about at all right now. And so just that deep breathing can almost bring your body back to homeostasis, even if it is just not proper breath work, but just the deep breaths, just breathe. It helps. It helps so much. I can't even tell you. Um, and I do believe that anxiety does come from buried and trapped trauma. Um, and it's so easy for us in the busy pace of life today to just continue to bury it because there's so many distractions, there's so many things at the surface which we're currently working on or people that we're socialising with, things, events that we go to. Trauma, believe it or not, is stored and trapped in the body um, and it needs to be released. Again, breath work and breathing is one of those ways to release it. Anyways, guys, um, as always, the comment section is open for discussion. Um, let me know down below if there's anything that you want to point out or you want to share with others that can really help with anxiety, um, any practices, any methods, etc. As always, I'm sending you all so much love and I'll see you on the next video. Laters.